Week one of the CPL is done. Welcome to the CPL show with me, Ryan Beichu. An enthralling first week of action at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy is over. And all the entertainment moves to the Queen's Park Oval starting tomorrow. At the end of the first week, the Trinbago Knight Riders proving to be unbeatable. The hosts are the only team in the tournament that hasn't lost the matches yet. Three matches, three wins, six points. The St. Lucia Zooks sits in second with the same number of points, but they've played and lost one extra match, while the Guyana Amazon Warriors have stumbled out of the starting blocks this season. At 10 a.m. tomorrow, the CPL is back on your screens. The top two opening week two. It's the Barbados Tridents against the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots. And then later in the evening from 5.30 p.m., the Guyana Amazon Warriors will take on the Jamaica Talawas. Remember, all of these matches can be seen on CNC3 and be streamed live on cnc3live.com as well. Tonight, we welcome in the Zoom room Barbadian broadcaster and CPL commentator Alex Jordan to talk us through what she's made of the first week. He was the Talawas' top batsman last season and is shaping up again that way this season. Glenn Phillips from New Zealand talks to us in our quarantine conversations and later on in the show, a CPL celebrity trivia. Two sports reporters, Jassy Marique and Kasten Cupid, go head to head to see who knows more about this tournament. You know, both are always at it on WhatsApp while the, ma the matches are going on. They'll get to settle the score tonight on camera. So what have you made of the first week of this very different CPL? Some cardboard fans in the stands, supporters from around the region have been sending in their videos to have it played on the big screen. Well, one person who can give us a first-hand account is Alex Jordan. She's been right in the mix of the action, patrolling the boundaries, talking to the players, and she joins us in the Zoom room. <laughs> Alex Jordan, welcome to the Zoom room. Thank you, thank you for having me. You know, you feed off the energy of the crowds. You're actually into the crowds for, right, for every CPL. Uh, this time around, no crowds, hardly any atmosphere around the ground. You can actually hear the echo of the ball coming off the batsman's <laughs> bat. Uh, what's the first win, the first week of the CPL been like for you? Well, it's been like, unlike any other CPL in our history, of course. Very strange not to have the crowds there, the pump, the energy of the people. And for me personally, such a tragedy. Um, and also not to have the music. I miss it a lot. In fact, I've always got the music up to my ear on my phone. Um, but we've got a tournament off and running. So, I mean, congratulations to the CPL. Congratulations to the Trinidad and Tobago government. Yeah, looking at, I, I, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because just to have this tournament off and running, you were there from the start. You had to go through the quarantine measures, just like the players. How big a success is this to have the CPL off? Actually, yeah. I mean, it's extraordinary. Let's look around the globe. I mean, we, I guess golf has come back and the NBA has come back. But, you know, it's been very difficult for sports to return to action. Uh, which means whatever, a lot of people out of work, it means a lot of revenue loss. And for sports fans, it means misery. <laughs> so to, to have live cricket competition happening in this atmosphere is is a total um, win. It's a win for everyone, you know? And I think in this case, I know it has been challenging for the TNT population. You guys have had a lot going on, including uh, an election so I'm really grateful that you have us here and, and, you know, glad for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. You know, the whole Hilton is full. Uh, the, the whole of us are in this one hotel and we have drivers and, you know, people working at the ground. So jobs created, cricket playing, God is love. Yeah, it's certainly, you know, there are so many positives, but it's incredibly different, this CPL. Uh, speaking from a fan's uh, viewpoint, the, the possibility doesn't exist to get an autograph, to get a picture, to meet the players, to see the players, to, of course, watch the games live. What's it been like for the players, though? They've had to go through, what, two weeks of quarantine. They've had numerous COVID-19 tests. Uh, is it playing on them in any way? Yes, of course. The players are humans as well. And uh, it's you know not the prep ideal preparation to be in your best form for a cricket tournament. Um, I just want to point out, of course, the players have been through all of that, except the Trini players, of course, who end, came into the camp much later. So in that way, they had a bit of an advantage. But yeah, I mean, from a cricketing perspective, the players haven't had the chance as much to practice. There are many teams like the Talawas, the Warriors, the Zooks, who even in that second week, because the first week of quarantine, we were in our rooms. We literally couldn't leave our rooms, so no one's playing there. 
you know, the players had to be creative about staying fit in their small space. The second week we were allowed to move around the hotel. So that was when teams were getting together on the tennis court and doing different things, doing different drills. Um, even on those days when they did finally get a little practice, some would rain out, as you know, that it's been raining almost every day in Port of Spain. So, uh, you know, they're not going to feel match fit like they would like to. And they emotionally, you know, we, when we're not on the cricket ground, when they're not in competition time, you know, we were in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm <laughs> sure many of the players would have been looking forward to in just enjoying themselves on the avenue and feeling the culture and feeling the country a little bit. But that's that's the world we're living in right now. Do you care to expand it just a little bit on whether you think uh, the Trin Trinbigo Knight Riders players had uh, a little bit of an advantage going into this tournament, uh, given the circumstances? Yeah, well, I don't think that's any real mystery or any real um, drama. It, it just is what it is. Trinidad and Tobago was the place that was able to host, host the tournament. And for whatever reason, it just meant, obviously, we had to come in from other countries. So we had to be tested earlier, in quarantine earlier. Um, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And it's such a good lesson in life, which I think COVID-19 and coronavirus is teaching all of us as a globe. You know, I remember my dad telling me as a youngster, I, you can't really appreciate as a youngster, but Brian, life isn't fair. <laughs> uh, the TKR Wait, started... What, what can we do, right? Yeah, I, I totally get you, um, but I share your sentiments a little bit earlier on. It's just so good to have the CPL off it's, uh, and running and, and to just actually have a CPL tournament because at one point, a lot of questions were raised as to whether it'll actually happen. Yeah, no, for sure. I was, it was, might not have happened. And it's a real coup that it did happen and fantastic. Congratulations to the CPL. Congrats to the Trinidad and Tobago government. And thank you to the Trinbagonian population for having us here. I think it's a real boon for you guys. I mean, the number of eyes, the millions and millions of eyes on your country from around the world could only be good, especially in this time where we've lost so much business, so much commerce. Um, so much opportunity to earn money. I mean, and people being employed on the ground here in Trinidad, you know, all the teams, all the production staff, everybody involved in the CPLs filled out the, the Trinidad and Tobago Hilton, you know. We, we have to be thankful for those kind of mercies. You're certainly right. Uh, TKR started the tournament, Alex. Did it surprise you in any way that they had such a, a really good start? <laughs> I guess I wasn't surprised. Even when TKR last year wasn't such a sort of threatening force, they always looked the team to be to me, they're just such a strong team. I mean, we've been in lockdown. We just talked about how players were sort of undercooked and not as prepared for the tournament as they would have been in other years. And Sunil Narayan comes out in the first two games, um, two for 19 and a half century and one for 19 and a half century, right? <laughs> like what? Then Colin Monroe comes to the party with his half century, DM Bravo Darren out of 49 yesterday. Then you've got the captain who hit 41 in 17 balls. You see, that team is full of men who can win the, win a game individually on their own. So TKR is looking fierce. Yeah, they're also uh, a team full of men that perhaps may be vying for a spot on that West Indies team uh, to compete in the now postponed Men's T20 World Cup. Do you get that sense? Of course. Uh, cricketers want to play cricket, right? And who doesn't want to play for the West Indies? I think uh, everyone would use the CPL as an opportunity to show what they can do. And in, in the case of a few of our more veteran players, show what they can still do. Have you seen any factors, and I'm specifically speaking here, here to no crowds, the quarantine, the whole bubble situation. Do you think, Alex, that any of those factors may influence the outcome of this CPL and maybe having an impact already on, some, on the performances of some of the, the franchises? No, well, that's an interesting question. I think individually, personalities will miss the pump and the music. You know, I think some people thrive on that. I remember I was talking to uh, Lendl Simmons before a game the other day, and I was, I was playing some tunes, and he was like, oh, gosh, how good would it be to hear some of that around the ground, right? Some people, depending on their personality, probably um, will have to work out how to self-motivate and focus in an atmosphere that, in which they're unused, to which they're unused. However... I asked, was it Jaden Seals? Jaden Seals, the youngster on the TKR team, who I haven't even mentioned in this TKR team that is so strong. Anyway, Jaden Seals looking awesome, the youngster. He said to me when I asked him, I said, well, you didn't look intimidated out there. You did very well on debut. <laughs> and he said, you know, I think no crowd had something to do with it. 
Wow. So for some P players, that might work, right? You're not, you just, it might just feel like a club game and you could just really get your eye in. So who knows? It would depend uh, individually on players. I don't think it will impact the outcome of the tournament. In some ways, it's a great leveler. Everyone's got these conditions to deal with. Um, even though TKR is ostensibly at home, there's still no crowd. So, so there's no 12th man in the stands. Up. Pardon me? So there's no 12th man in the stands. Exactly, exactly. So in some ways, it's a level playing field. I'm just interested now, at the other end of the table, Alex, uh, you've got TKR at the top, but last year's finalists, Guyana Amazon Warriors and champions Barbados Tridents, they've both sort of stumbled out of the starting blocks this time. What do you think have caused that? Okay, interesting. Tridents with two points from three matches, so that's just the one win, and the Warriors with four points from four matches, the two wins. Yeah. Um, well, let me speak from a Warriors point of view. Um, I think in some ways it is good for the Warriors to have started like this. We remember what they did last season with a perfect uh, first round of, you know, first team to have ever won all of their matches. And that, that can get very pressure filled. And we saw that they, they faltered right at the end in the final. So I think Warriors fans should feel good about this start. That, okay, they're not winning every match. They can fine tune different players batting further down into the lineup. Everyone's getting a chance to bat. But it's early, very early in the tournament. And um, that is a dangerous team, Guyana okay, Amazon Warriors. Never discount them. Uh, as a core of young Guyanese players who are just full up of talent. Shimron Hetmeyer, what a tournament. How, is, how has he started? Started looking gorgeous, man. Nicholas Pura and. Um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all the names escape me, but it's such a strong, it's such a strong team. Barbados tried it similarly. Now let's remember that their 2019 season, they did very little, if anything, at the top end of the tournament. We had written them off. It was the middle and end of the tournament when they started to win games. And, you know, a lot of people would say, that's how you win, that's how you win a tournament. It's not how you start, you know, it's how you finish. And they also fill up a stars and including uh, Rashid Khan, um, and some big power hitters at the top. I mean, come on, it's early days. You do not do yourself a disservice if you discount either of those teams. All right, so we're heading into the second week of the tournament now. Those players that you mentioned who would have needed time to settle in, settle into the conditions, they've had that week. What can we expect, Alex, from the second week of the competition now that all of the teams know what they're about in this tournament? Well, it's gonna be really interesting. Um, it is the second week, but you know they, they learned the conditions of the Brandon Lara Cricket Academy. We are headed now to the Queen's Park Oval in the second week. So new conditions and new strips. And in some ways, I think it's going to be uh, when you see the tournament really getting into its stride because the, just sort of the logistics, the oval is so close to where we were. We don't have the hour drive out and the hour, hour drive in. Uh, feel a little more sort of... Um, close compact journey to the to the stadium but it's everyone's to play for you know the patriots and kids and nevis patriots the only team not to have got off the mark yet this is an opportunity for them new ground new start new week get some points under the belt and i'm hoping ryan we talked about this before we went on air i am hoping for a really tight tournament yeah very close one indeed so alex it's customary for uh our analysts in the Zoom room to take our match predictor. Danny Morrison was here last week, and you've got yeah. big boots to fill because he <laughs> got seven what. out of ten matches oh. right over the last week. So I'm really? going to ask you, to, yeah, you got seven matches out of the ten for this past week. Right. Well done, Danny. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask you for the ten matches that are coming up uh, this week, starting tomorrow. Uh, okay. Let's bring up the match predictor, and I will ask you, uh, to start with Barbados Tridents versus the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots tomorrow at 10 a.m. Oh my God. You know, this is such a hard one because I, I, I want to tell you what my mind thinks, but emotionally, I, I'm sort of invested in the tournament. So I want St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots to win. Anyway, I think the Tridents will win that one. I think Patriots are lacking confidence and Tridents need a win since uh, they also lost a, a very close match yesterday. They'll be hungry, so I, I give the Tridents over the Patriots. All right. The evening match, we'll see the Guyana Amazon Warriors taking on the Jamaica Talawas. Big game. Yeah, Warriors. Warriors. Warriors all the way. Warriors were robbed of a match yesterday by an incredible comeback by the St. Lucia Zoo. <laughs> uh, I think that they're going to, I think they're going to take down the Talawas who are still finding their feet, although Andre Russell did find some form 
in the last game. I give, I still give it to the Warriors. TKR versus the St. Lucia Zoots. TKR. Barbados Tridents versus the Jamaica Talawas. That's the game the Talawas is going to win. St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots versus the St. Lucia Zooks. I got all, oh, oh gosh, Naran. Get it, get it, Patriots again now. Get it, Patriots again now. <laughs> TKR versus the Guyana Amazon Warriors. We know how that went the first time around. Yeah. I'm going to give that one to the Warriors. To the Warriors. TKR versus the Barbados Tridents on Saturday morning. TKR. Jamaica Talawas versus the Patriots that afternoon. Woo! Woo! That's a tough one. Ta who is it? Who is it versus Patriots? Jamaica Talawas versus the Patriots. Talawas. On Sunday morning, the Tridents take on the Zooks. Okay. Um, Tridents. And finally, to wrap up the week, Guyana Amazon Warriors versus the Patriots of the Oval. The Warriors. The Warriors all the way. Alex Jordan, we're going to see how you did over the course <laughs> of this week. I probably did terribly. I probably did terribly because a lot of my emotions, that's, that's what I hope the results are. <laughs> I really want Patriots to get going. They, 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 they lost three on the trot, but Truthfully, they could have won two quite easily. That's that's that is um, T20 cricket, and I think a word has to be said on the Patriots. You asked me how the pandemic is affecting teams, right? Let's spare a thought for the Patriots who are missing Fabian Allen mm. deep in that batting lineup, who is such a power hitter and such such an amazing man in the field as well. And he missed his flight yeah. in COVID time, which means he no more flight. Get it, yeah. So they are severely impacted, I think, by, by that loss. Well, Alex, we're going to see how you did over the course of this week, if you can top the great Danny Morrison for <laughs> this. No, no, boy, we'll see. We'll definitely let our viewers know, but do have yourself a really great and successful tournament, and we wish you all the best for the rest of the CPL. Hey, thanks, Ryan, and thanks for having me on. <laughs> CPL commentator Alex Jordan giving us some insight into what she's been seeing. You know, she's accustomed to being among the fans, interviewing the fans, and connecting us, the viewing audience, with what's going on around the ground. It's a lot different for her as well this time around. Coming up, it's not so different for this guy, though. Glenn Phillips has been the Talawa's standout batsman, and he started this tournament making an early statement. When we come back, the Kiwi is in our quarantine conversation. <laughs> Welcome back to the CPL show. One week down, two weeks to go. It's a shorter tournament given the pandemic, but a lot of people are just happy to have some cricket. The tournament that is taking place here in Trinidad and Tobago is being beamed to over 100 million viewers around the world. That's a lot of eyes on TNT, so be on your best behavior. Before the start of the competition, all of the players coming into Trinidad and Tobago had to go through a 14-day quarantine. During that time, I jumped in my jacket and tie and had conversations with several of the international players. New Zealander Glenn Phillips was the Jamaica Talawa's top scorer last season, hammering 374 runs in 10 matches. Now, that included three half centuries. He was the tournament's fourth highest scorer as well. He spent some time with us in our quarantine conversation. <laughs> Glenn Phillips, welcome to the show. Hey, Ryan. How's it going, mate? It's going good. Thank you very much for, be for being here and joining us. How does it feel to be back in the Caribbean amid COVID-19? Hey, honestly, it's really good to be back. <laughs> um, obviously, we've had a fair set of our own lockdown procedures back down in New Zealand. So um, it's nice to be out of the country for a little while and back playing some cricket soon, hopefully. Yeah, you're back with the Jamaica Talawas as well. You were the top scorer for that team last season. You were the fourth highest scorer in the Caribbean Premier League altogether. But Jamaica Talawas didn't do so well, finishing Salah on the table. Was that a little bit frustrating for you, despite your great efforts? Um, you know, cricket's a bit of a tough game. You know, sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. So, um, and especially in the franchise cricket game, um, there's there's so many factors involved and you know it comes down to which team it gels the best and fires the best for that particular tournament and um you know guyana and barbados uh, fired at a really good time and um you know barbados have winning it last year they 
they gelled together really well. So, um, you know, we've got a, a good group of boys this year and, um, you know, a lot of talent uh, flying around. And, um, you know, if it's our turn to fire and, you know, we make the best of our opportunities, then there's no reason we can't win it just as easily as any other team. A good group of boys, but uh, that won't include Chris Gale. How tough will this tournament be without the star opener? Um, yeah, it, you know, everybody has their own preferences with a team. Um, obviously, I've got no control over that sort of selection. Um, you know, he's an amazing player and um, definitely can change the game in a heartbeat. So, um, you know, it, it'll be tough without him, but, um, you know, cricket goes on and um, we'll, we'll make the best of the, the team that we've got and um, everyone will just have to step up that little bit more. Given the season that you had last season, Glenn, do you now seeing yourself having to step up even further this season to, you know, really counter what the loss of Chris Gale? Um, no, I don't. I don't believe I need to change anything differently. Um, you know, we've got such firepower on our side. You know, um, you, you take one guy out. That, you know, even even if it is Chris Gale, you've got other guys that do also have a incredible amount of power and unfortunately that's not the game that I possess with um, my body type unfortunately and I've got to let the other boys do their roles um, so you know it, it all depends on what the coaching staff is asking of me um, and then me personally knowing my own game and bringing my best foot forward to the team. I just want to talk a little bit about your cricket career because you had a really good start of the year. You made your test debut in January. Uh, where, where is your cricket career going? Is it along the lines of Test ODI and T20? Uh, test in T20? What can we expect from Glenn, Glenn Phillips? Uh, honestly, my favorite format is definitely ODI cricket. Um, but, you know, we've got such a strong batting lineup um, in New Zealand that, or such a settled batting lineup that it'd be hard, it's hard to break through. So, um, you know, I can just do the best that I can and now. Um, you know, our domestic game back home to be able to push my case there. Um, and, you know, hope that when my time comes, I'll be ready for it. Um, but, you know, I'm not shutting down any forms of cricket at this stage. Well, um, you can't because obviously I'm, <laughs> you had a decent start to your test career. You didn't have a bad start at all. So would you like to, to, to continue in the yeah, longest I'd, format of the I'd game? Yeah, I'd definitely like to play more test cricket. Um, you know, if those opportunities came up again, you know, it was a... It was a lucky break to actually get that opportunity in the first place. And, you know, I was I was more prepared for it than I have been other years. So, you know, if that chance came around again, I'd be grabbing it. Listen, that um, was, I'm not sure how, if our viewers watching truly understand how prepared you were for that because you got a late call up. You were dropped off a no ball. You were dropped twice by Nathan Lyon, the Australian spinner. Then you went on to make 52. What did you make of that first test match of your career? Oh, I think everything just happened to fall in place with a lot of luck, quite frankly. You know, everything from getting to the airport just before the plane actually took off and, wow. you know, Air New Zealand doing such a great job with holding the plane for me. Um, you know, I got the phone call two hours before I had to be on the flight and I was two hours away almost. So, you know, everything just sort of fell into place nicely. It was, it was a pretty dream start. Um, but, you know, cricket doesn't always go that way, so I'll ride the luck when it comes. <laughs> You know, in all reality, Glenn, you had a, a really good start to the year. Uh, do you ever feel, though, during these long hours of quarantine and, and the long hours back home in, in New Zealand during the pandemic, uh, you know, did you ever feel that the pandemic robbed you of what could have been a truly stellar year in your cricketing career? Um, you know, I'm always a big believer about you can't change the situation that you're in, and you just got to live and, and deal with what's around you and go with the flow of things. So, um, you know, I've trained just as hard as I would have any other year. And, you know, with the, the pandemic coming around, it just means that there's a new challenge that we've got to face. And um, I'm really excited to see how it goes. And um, it just means that we all have to prepare mentally so much better because, our, you know, the, the opportunities to train before this tournament are obviously a little bit few and far between with having to lock down. So... Um, and, you know, it's, it's good the process that everyone's going through so that the tournament can be run as safely as possible. Um, so the, the mental side of things to be ready for this tournament will be definitely, definitely the key thing.
I just want to go back to something interesting that you just said. You said that the one day international format, the one day format rather, is your favorite form of the game. You're yet to make your one day international debut though for New Zealand. Uh, is that something you're working extra hard on? Um, I wouldn't say extra hard. Um, you know, you work just as hard on your game for all three formats as you possibly can. Um, and, you know, it's I'm just really waiting for that extra stellar one-day season to be able to break through to that black cap side. Um, and it just hasn't quite happened yet, you know. That's, um, I've had a lot of success in the four-day competition and a lot of success in the T20s, but when it seems to come to my one-day stuff, it's, you know, it's there, but it's it's just not enough to push anybody out of their spot. So um, all I can do is just keep working as hard as I possibly can, and then when the opportunity comes, that I'm ready for it again. And it, of course, it doesn't become any easier when your nation just made the final of the One Day International yeah. World Cup. Yeah, massively so. Um, and like I said, our batting lineup is so incredibly strong, um, and you know, I'm. I would never wish anybody out of their position if they were playing well. So um, it, all I can do myself is to put as many runs on the board as possible and, and push my name for selection. Um, and like I said, when, when that opportunity comes, and hopefully it will, then I just have to be as ready as I possibly can be for it. But whatever, with every cricket match that you play, I know that you see it as an opportunity to get the attention mm -hmm. of the New Zealand selectors in their selection process. This Caribbean Premier League will obviously be a very important tournament to you, but I just wonder what type of mindset did you travel to the Caribbean with? Having been so successful last season within your team as being the highest scorer for the Jamaica Talawas, what do you tell yourself now entering this new tournament? Um, I try and take the learnings from the last two seasons, especially where things went well. Um, but I also had moments in those tournaments where, you know, I didn't know what I was doing um, and I didn't know how things were going to turn out. You know, um, Sawan has been an absolute amazing mentor um, and he's helped my game a lot, especially the mental side of it, being able to take a breath, take a breather, um, know that I've got a little more time than I think. So for me, it's just about going through this tournament with the same mindset of... Um, start again you know it's a new tournament new people new places um and um just have to assess each pitch um each game as it comes and try to flow as much as i can with um whatever's thrown at me what was your reaction when the men's t20 world cup was announced to be postponed um <clears throat> sorry quite frankly i didn't really even know it was postponed <laughs> <laughs> I was in my little hole at home, so. <laughs> Are you a little bit disappointed, though, given the fact that now it'll be pushed back to perhaps 2022? Oh, no, like, not not personally for me. Obviously, that just gives me a little bit more time. Um, you know, I think there were definitely a few boys that were ahead of me um, in that selection process. So what, what that now does is actually buys me a bit more time to push my case that more, um, that little bit more. Um, to then be able to make that T20 uh, World Cup side, um, you know, so I'm looking at more of as a blessing rather than anything <laughs> else. You know, you, you mentioned that you stayed in your little hole, quote unquote, during that pandemic while you were back home in New Zealand. You know, uh, how was life for you, such a busy cricketer, traveling to different T20 franchise leagues around the world on a month-to-month -month basis, playing for the New Zealand national team in terms of T20 and Test cricket? What was life like for you during those three very long months? Um, well, I mean, we were only locked down for six weeks total, so it, it wasn't all that um, troublesome for us. But I'm a very outdoorsy person, so when I'm not playing cricket, I'm surfing, <laughs> I'm hiking, I'm... You know, I'm hunting, I'm doing all sorts of different things. And for me, being inside for six weeks was definitely a tough one. Um, you know, I took to, there was, you know, sayings that, you know, people went one of two ways. They either got incredibly fit or they got incredibly unfit. And I decided to go the way that if I can't be outside, I'm going to have to push my body to the limit it can while I'm inside. So, um, you know, I try to get my body and my mind in as... Uh, fit and mentally strong stage as possible so that I could be ready for this uh, CPL coming up and, you know, have no excuses and no regrets.
for, forgive me if you seem if I seem like I'm being repetitive here, but you know many commentators who've analyzed your career while you've played cricket on the field of play uh, agree that you're incredibly talented. For someone as incredibly talented as you, you've played 11 T20 international matches. You've made your test debut in January. How do you plan on scripting your own future in this sport? Because it seems, and I genuinely mean this, it seems that whatever you want to do in cricket, you can do. Oh, well, I'm glad you guys see it that way. Um, obviously, I'm not, a the, selector, the but I'm not a selector, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the mental game that goes on in each player's head is so different, you know. Um, people may see you as talented or that you can go a certain distance, but, you know, it's got to be that belief inside you yourself. Um, and there's definitely moments where I have that belief more than others. Um, you know, you have success in certain parts of the world and you really look forward to going back there because it's a it's a place of good memories, good confidence. So um, for me, it, I, I've always believed in if I work hard enough at training and I tick all my boxes off and I deserve the right to perform, there's no reason I shouldn't. Um, so that therefore transfers into the game and I can relax and play as I need to. Even like, you know, every cricketer has their ups and downs. Um, but for me personally, I try to at least look at it from a balanced level mindset that, you know, I'm not too high when it's good and I'm not too low when it's bad, you know, so you can ride the, ride the wave that little bit easier. So in terms of scripting my own destiny as such, um, you know, no one else can do it but me. Um, and you know, I want to make sure that I have no excuses for anything that I do and therefore that means I have to train as hard as possible beforehand. Glenn Phillips, we want to continue wishing you all the best for this particular tournament and all the best as well for your New Zealand career. We really hope that you make that one day international debut soon. Thank you very much, Ryan. Indeed, we do hope that the CPL can help him break into that New Zealand white ball side. It's certainly a task because they're one of the top teams in one day cricket. It was great having Glenn Phillips on the show. The middle overs are done. When we come back, we posted a poll to our social media platforms earlier today. Who was your player of the first week of the tournament? The results are next. Plus, our CPL celebrity trivia and what you've been telling us on social media. You're watching the CPL show here on CNC3. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the CPL Show. My name is Ryan Beju. Last week in our CPL Celebrity Trivia, we saw Carissa Lee stunning Peter Christopher. And yes, I did drop her a hint. There will be no such help this week, though, because two sports guys squared off. Here's the result. We're back for another CPL Celebrity Trivia. This week, we'll have two sports reporters squaring off in Jassy Marik versus Caston Cupid. But first, to determine who will take the first question, we've got umpire Keith Clement with a toss. Numbers. Numbers wins. So, Jassy, you have the first question, or would you like to give it to Caston? Um, I'll give the first question to Caston. You'll give the first question to Caston. Caston, first question to you. Which team finished on top of the table last season? The Ghana Amazon Warrior. That is correct. Jassy, name one of the TKR owners. Uh, Mr. V uh, Shah Rukh Khan. Correct. After one week of matches, which player has scored the most runs so far this CPL cast? Sunil Narayan. That's incorrect. This batsman has hit the most sixes in CPL history. Who is he? Christopher Henry Gale. Correct. How far did TKR make it in the tournament last year, Castor? To the semi-final. Correct. Which years did TKR win its three CPL titles, Jassy? 17, 18, and 14. Wrong. 15, 17, and 18. Kasten, how many international players are allowed to be in a CPL franchise? Four. Incorrect. Five. How long did the Antigua Hawks Bills last before they disappeared from the CPL jersey? Mm, one season. Two seasons. Kasten, final question to you. What was the West Indies T20 tournament called before the CPL? Stanford T. Stanford T. Stanford T. Stanford T. Caribbean T20. That brings us to the end. Umpire Keith Clement, what is the scoreline? Two for Kasten and two for Jassy. Two for 
Kakasan and Tufa Jassi it is. We will have to go into a super over here. Doc <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have to come up with some questions right on the spot here. So it's going to be Jassi first in this super over. So Jassi, who was the first TKR captain? First TKR captain? Win Bravo. Correct. Uh, Kasten Cupid, uh, where was the first final played in the Caribbean Premier League? Who won the first final? <laughs> who, won the <laughs> who won the first final? Jimmy Catalawas. Correct. All right, Jassy, we're back to you in sudden death. Super over. Uh, who had the most wickets in the 2018 CPL? 2018? Wow. Um, 2018, I know last year was Hayden Walsh. 2018 would have been um, Mohammed Hafiz. That's incorrect, actually, Jassy. It was actually Fawad Ahmed when TNT TKR won. So, Kasten, you can win it here. Which batsman has scored the most boundaries in a CPL tournament? One tournament. Any other one tournament? In the whole tournament, in the history of CPL, which batsman has scored the most boundaries? Four runs. I don't feel all uh, right, but I'll still go with Chris Gale. Chris Gale is incorrect. It's actually Dwayne Smith from Barbados. So that's all the time we have for this particular challenge. But these two men will be back for the second leg of the CPL Celebrity Trivia next week. <laughs> I absolutely did not see that CPL celebrity trivia going that way. Jassy Marie and Kasten Cupid cannot be separated. We'll have to probably see if we can get those two back on a subsequent show uh, for another, a second leg of this CPL celebrity trivia. We've also been following what you've been telling us on social media. Let's bring up some of the comments. Uh, on Facebook, Aleem Khan told us, TKR looking solid as usual, but really happy to see the Zooks coming together and having some success. Also on Facebook, Perry Jagan says, TKR is my team, bowling and batting, looking very good, solid. We are taking the title back. T20 is our game. Continue playing as a unit, guys. On Instagram, Blindside385 says, TKR all the way. They are the best team in the Caribbean. To all the players in each team, you all are doing a great job. We wish we could have been there out in the stadium cheering you on. We love you guys. Hashtag the biggest party in sport. Remember, you can continue sending us your comments and your posts, just please use the hashtag, hashtag the CPL show. That way we'll be able to get in touch with you guys all the more easier. A few hours ago as well, we submitted a poll on Twitter asking, who is your player of the first week of the CPL? Well, by and large, Sinal Narayan was an easy winner on this poll, winning with 87.6% Rostin Chase in second on 6.2%. We do hope that you've enjoyed the CPL show once more, our second show of the Caribbean Premier League as the tournament turns towards its second week. Coming up tomorrow, the Barbados Tridents will face the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots from 10 a.m. in the morning. The evening match will see the Guyana Amazon Warriors taking on the Jamaica Talawas in a match that should be very, very interesting. That starts at 5.30 p.m. Remember that you can watch all 33 matches live on CNC3. We've also got it live streaming at cnc3live.com in case you're not able to be in front of a television set. We've also got radio updates at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, just past the hour mark, and 1 o'clock actually at 5 p.m. and at 6 p.m. as well. So remember, you can catch all of those updates with regards to the CPL. So remember, you can also read match reports of every match that is taking place with Vinod Namchan as our Guardian Media Cricket Correspondent in the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian newspaper. Well, that's how we leave you tonight. Thank you so much for watching. We wish you a wonderful and safe night. Please keep sanitizing. Please keep washing your hands as well as wearing your masks. We can't wait to see you next time. Mambo number five.